Assalamu alaikum, peace be with you and welcome to Islam and Life with me, Tariq Ramadan, broadcasting from London. In today's show, we ask the question, what are the dangers of religious movies taking artistic license? The latest film release from Hollywood, Noah, has created a stir globally amongst both Christians and Muslims. Noah, which is based on the biblical story in Genesis of Noah's Ark and the Great Flood, arrived amid a deluge of outrage from religious groups. The film has been banned across the Middle East. The rejection of screening Noah is based on a fatwa issued by the Al-Azhar Institution, who has said depicting Allah's messengers contradicts the teachings of Islam. Christians across the world have also been divided on the issue. Christian group, faith-driven consumers, have come forward to say, Having now seen Noah, we are disappointed to report that the film misses the boat. Noah is a significant departure both from biblical narrative and message, and faith-driven consumers are likely not going to spend their hard-earned dollars on an entertainment product that fails to resonate. Darren Aronofsky, the film's director, has responded by saying the film is a loose interpretation of the Bible. This week on Islam and Life, we ask, what are the dangers of religious movies taking artistic license? As we heard the loose interpretation of the biblical story, something which is very important from an Islamic perspective for two reasons when it comes to arts, when it comes to artistic uh, a translation of something which is coming from the sacred story which is so uh, important for the Muslims. The first important thing is this relationship to the messengers, peace be upon them, where what we understand for the mainstream tradition is that we don't picture and we don't represent the messengers for a very important reason which is to avoid following uh, uh, the, 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 the human being who is coming with the messenger the message and forgetting the Creator, which is once again to worship God alone, Allah alone. And the second thing, it's also about the stories that are coming in the, uh, the Quran and, and to be very strict with the facts because this is the very Word of God. So the license when it comes to arts is can we in fact uh, uh, propose or translate something which is a human interpretation of something which is the sacred story that is coming from God to direct uh, uh, mankind towards the, the, the right worship. These are critical questions from an Islamic perspective and especially in a time where we are talking about freedom of expression, we are talking about freedom as the ultimate reference to which we have to uh, uh, accept or for which we have to accept uh, uh, to go beyond the limits when it comes to the sacred and when it comes to the religious uh, references. These are critical questions again, and we and to answer all these questions, I'm joined by my guest, Sheikh Ahmad Hanif, an Islamic scholar. Uh, let me start with this question because this is very critical. We are facing uh, with the world culture coming from the U.S. or coming from European countries, uh, but not only we can find this everywhere. It's freedom, and we can translate this. It's entertainment. We have somebody who can tell. You know, I take uh, my distance is a loose uh, interpretation of the, the biblical story. So there is something here which is very important from an Islamic perspective. When it comes to uh, uh, portraying or translating stories uh, from the Quran, how do we have to deal with this? How do we have to understand this very specific relationship, not only as believers, but in the light of arts and artistic interpretations? Uh, <coughs> I think historically, um, religion in general, and Islam in particular, um, has always been presented to the people in different artistic fashions, whether it be the, um, the visual arts, whether it be in poetry, whether even it be in plays and so on. 
So it is nothing new that religion um, will express itself or should express itself in different um, forms of media for the different personalities in society for them to grasp. Hmm. You cannot, for example, speak about f the philosophical aspect of Islam to a five-year-old, you know. Hmm. But you could present that person with a picture book and simple stories of the prophets. Hmm? Hmm. And you would have a drawing of a figure who represents a prophet, but with the face maybe in light or something like that. And this very um, aspect of the face being in light uh, is a sort of a compromise with respect to the fact that you cannot really uh, artistically separate the figure of a prophet from the story of their lives, the very beautiful stories of their lives. And at the same time, you have to obey the, uh, the, the, the rule that you should not depict them in a facial, uh, uh, you know, deliberate facial manner, you see? Mm. Um, so uh, I think the, 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 this idea of art and religion, art and religion are not you know, contradictory to each other. Indeed, you have a, a, a thought that says art actually is in essence, in its evolution, it was in essence religious in the sense that uh, the further we are re away we are removed from the source of the pristine source of the religious revelation, the more human beings require art in order to bolster their spirituality. And so, for example, we can see the evolution of the mosque in the time of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to, for example, the mosques that we have today, where the dome represents the open sky that mm. the mosque was supposed to be under but, and so on. Yes. So we ha must have... Uh, uh, but that, uh, that's, yeah. a, that's an important point. First, we cannot uh, 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 posit or, or, or state that there is a contradiction in terms between arts and religion. And as you said, many artistic dimensions are nurtured uh, uh, by the religious inspiration. That's true. And I think that this is important because there are misunderstandings coming from the Muslims within you know, Muslim majority countries or uh, uh, even in the West. But there is a second step here. When you have people coming to this, not Christians, but Muslims, but also Christians, by the way, mm. with, with this story saying from the very beginning, before, because when you are talking about, you know, the, 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 the books for children, when, you know, the face is a light and things right. like this, that, that works with the children. Now you are uh, presenting a movie and the same story happened with the messenger mm. when people were saying, you know, the, the, the producer was talking to scholars and scholars say you can't just uh, uh, depict the, 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 the Prophet Salam, so you have to avoid, so he's not there. We can, we can hear people talking about him, but we cannot see him. Now we have the same story with uh, Noah, Noah and saying, you can't do this. So from the very beginning, this is perceived as something which is Islamically wrong. You can't do this. So uh, uh, this is by itself artistic license. What would you say uh, to Muslims reacting like this and what could be the solution? Yeah, okay, I think, I think um, Muslims, in their artistic representations have to obey Islamic rules. And mm. Christians in their artistic representations, representations don't have to obey Muslim rules, they obey, obey Christian rules, yes. right? Yes. So if a Muslim, uh, uh, let's say, um, wants to uh, make a movie about Jesus Christ, you know, and portray him as not a son of God, but a, as a man, Christians might be opposed to that, but from an Islamic point of view, there's no problem with that. Yeah. Yeah? Hmm. Similarly, if Christians want to portray the prophets in, with their physical features, having Russell Crowe or whoever it wants to be, um, to, to depict this, that's according to their rules. Okay? Muslims don't have to look at that. Hmm. You see? Um, so I think we have to recognize uh, the freedom for the others, freedom yeah. for others yeah. according yeah. to their own particular point of view. But I think you know, when, when you start talking about movies, uh, movies, I, pers I believe, are the most... Uh, superficial means of conveying a story or a message. When you look at movies that are based upon books, even kids who read Harry Potter before the movie came out would tell you the book is much better 
than the film. That's true if you read the book. The book, but exactly. But if you didn't, All right. the, 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 the movie could be very powerful. <laughs> It could be. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is, you know, uh, movies are, um, you have to really take, take movies uh, realistically and see that they are largely two-dimensional types of, of mm. things. And it is in this area that you find the need for artistic license becoming much more necessary, okay, than, for example, artistic license that you would need for a book, for example. That's true. Yeah. You see? Mm. And so I, I think... As a matter of principle, we have to accept uh, that in a, a movie, like in a play, uh, we have to accept certain artistic license. And this becomes extremely important because the message of Noah and Abraham and all of these prophets is a profound message. It is not a, a, a two-dimensional message. It's a very profound message. And so therefore, the artistic license that you take must come from a person who is sensitive to that spiritual message. Okay. Mm. who is able to, uh, to be sensitive to symbolisms, for example, mm. and present symbolism in the form of personalities or, or objects or what have you, events and so forth, that would represent something uh, that in and of itself uh, talks about a profound aspect of the, of the religion. And I think this is where Noah airs, because the people who are... Uh, taking advantage of this artistic license, do not have this spiritual sensitivity yeah. and depth to be able to present. I, I, I want to come to the, the, the movie itself and, and try to, to uh, uh, get your opinion on this. But before that, uh, you are saying we should accept artistic license to a, a certain limit, of course. The question yes. is the limit. The question yes. is the limit. For example, I was in a commission where people came to us and, and producers and people who had uh, in mind to uh, do again a very important movie on the prophet's life, peace be mm. upon him. And they were asking, and, 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 and the consensus, almost the consensus between the scholars is, when it comes to the, the messenger, peace be upon him, you can't. So show him because this is not going to be accepted and this is not uh, right from the mainstream Islamic understanding. Now when it comes to the companions, the, the, the people were divided mm. but the, the majority was saying you can go for this and go for everything else and stick to the facts. So when you say okay artistic license, what to, to such to which extent? How, where do we have to put the limit? Because at the end, people are saying, if you accept this, you will end up having movies from within the Islamic tradition going as far as this other movie that could be, in fact, insulting for the Islamic tradition. Well, I, I mean, I, 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 it's not my position to, 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 to take the place of the head of Al-Azhar, hmm. you know what I mean? But um, just no, but like I'm, I'm talking about the limits. I How understand. do you see that? Let's yeah. say, for example, yeah. with respect to the, the presence of the Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. When you look at some books, ancient books in Islam, for example, the Mi'raj, hmm. right? You have a symbolic representation, all right, of the Holy Prophet without his face being shown. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? I don't see why in a movie you can't have a person. Okay, whose face is shined out to present uh, the, the picture of the prophet. So you would say more the, creativity yeah, in, I, I, in the I, way I, it has I, to be. Yeah. I found the movie The Message very disturbing when they're talking to a, to a camera, and you know they're talking to a camera. It's, 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 it's the, the, the central person of the message wasn't there, hmm. you see? Um, and this is the problem, okay? I, I think when one say you cannot at all have any aspect of the presence of the prophet in the movie, you might as well not make a movie with a prophet in it at all. I mean, mm. no prophet, no, you know, talk about the companions' lives, if mm. you know what I mean, you know? Mm. So I think, you know, from an artistic license point of view, we arrive at a compromise, mm. you know, or give a Christian to make the movie. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It was one of the proposals I got. I got. <laughs> So, so, so now, let us talk about the movie on, on yeah, Noah, which was yeah. not done by a Muslim. It right. was done uh, referring to the, the biblical story. Right. Uh, when you see the reaction coming from Christians mm. saying, that's too much, you are going too far. Right. And you had the producer who has to come and say, look, this was not the story. It was something that I did uh, with my creativity, my imagination, taking distance from, from the very story. 
Right. It's going to be very difficult from an Islamic yes. viewpoint to accept that. Yes. So, so how would you yes. respond to this? I think, uh, for this reason, I think uh, uh, a religious movie should be made by people within the religious tradition or who are sympathetic to religion, who are, who is, who are able to, to see the profound reality of religion. And such people exist. Yeah. Like, for example, Anne-Marie Chamel. Hmm. You know, she's not a Muslim, yeah. Yeah. You know, but she could, 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 could empathize with religion because the religious message is so profound. You know, the religious sensitivities are so uh, sensitive hmm. you know, that you need somebody to have these things in mind you know, while they're producing a movie. These Christians are not saying you shouldn't make a movie about Noah. Hmm. These Christians are saying you should make a movie about Noah that is true to the story of Noah. Yeah. You see, mm. whereas this man is going into CGI too much and, and uh, you know, uh, creating monsters and so forth and so on, that um, is just making it something for uh, a wider non-religious public that makes it no difference to Spider-Man or Iron Man or something like mm. that. But what is the limit then? Should we stop him from doing this? Is it right to say that's just not acceptable? Because at the end, the big question here is, what limits do we uh, yeah. put for, or do we set for uh, freedom of expression? I think the limits are, are largely uh, within the, 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 the faith itself. Uh, you know, we cannot, uh, in this world, set limits for outsiders to depict religion. Hmm. We can't, you know. Um, I think if Muslims or Christians are in control of a state, they could do a more profound job of limiting these things. You know, but Christians in an environment like this do not control the state. Their, 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 their values do not control that of the state and so forth. And so therefore we are in a situation where, um, you know, renegade elements could depict uh, religion, religious stories uh, from any faith, you know, according to the way they see fit. And I think this is very unfortunate. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that much can be done on that. I think what, what limitations that you would like to see imposed would be ones imposed upon Christian movie producers and, 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 and Muslim movie producers, devout Christian and devout Muslim movie producers, but in terms of secularists and so forth, I don't think there's much we can do. Okay, so, so not being able or not even going that way by saying it's not the way for us to prevent people from doing things. Because this is also something that we have to, 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 to discuss with Muslims today. It's mm. very often emotional reaction and saying no and criticizing while listening to what you are saying, because you are talking about, let us deal with our legacy, deal with our scriptural sources, and deal with it with creativity mm -hmm. and new ways. Right. So it could be that the right answer to what you are saying and what we are facing now is, instead of uh, prohibiting movies, let us be creative by proposing something else uh, talking about the life of uh, Noah, talking about the life of the messengers, peace be upon him and, and, and upon them and, 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 and try to promote this, which is not the reaction that we have now because it seems that we have a problem with arts and we have a problem with this creativity. So, so how do we have to, to move on yes. uh, knowing that millions of Muslims today are at the, uh, at the center of these discussions in the West? Yes, I think the most important thing, I, f first of all, I think by default, these people occupy a, a gap that we have left, you know, that uh, religion, in, in Islam in particular, and Christianity as well, as, and, and religion in general, uh, they need to take, to be in the forefront of creating uh, new, innovative, artistic manifestations of their beliefs. If a Christian a filmmaker with the right kind of financial backing was to have made a Noah that would have been so good that a Noah of this movie would, would lose at the box office in comparison to that. You know, mm. we would have taken the, 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 the high ground, mm. you know. And so I think it's a good thing for Muslims to do, for Muslim governments and so on, to invest in a movie industry Hmm. You know, in, uh, in you know media, to be able to take command of the representation of their belief system, so that anybody else who do not share that the, the spiritual sensitivity 
coming at this would end up looking very bad with respect to the profundity of what Muslims would have presented. I think this is the best way for us to, to act. Unfortunately, you find that religious, um, I would call it mentalities, you know, are not as forward thinking. They are basically reactive, hmm. you see? So they don't make a movie, but when a movie is made, they jump up and criticize it. Mm -hmm. You see, and in this criticism, it creates greater curiosity for mm -hmm. them, for people to yeah, exactly. go and, mm -hmm. and, and, and attend these things. Which happened many times over, over the, 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 the recent years. But uh, uh, the problem is that very often for Muslims, this, it's a risk to go to us because of the criticism that we have within. So it means that we need to change also the Muslim mindset Absolutely. when it comes to, to, to us. How would you push the people to go I, in I think that this direction? is where, for example, the intelligentsia you know, and uh, the, uh, the curricula in the various madrasas and uh, centers of learning like Al-Azhar and Qum and these places, um, this is where I think it should start. And I think compromises can be made, as I told you, with, with respect to these types of things. But yes, I think this, the problem is I think our centers of Islamic learning um, have not kept up with the times really, and have not engaged themselves in that type of debate and discussion. Thank you so much. I think that, uh, uh, once again, this discussion is a critical one. And as you said, it might be that the Muslims, we, uh, with your final words, have to be much more creative and be more courageous, even though, as you said, many scholars were pushing and saying, we have to understand that from an Islamic perspective, there are many things that are possible. There is room for uh, creativity and freedom here. While at the same time, what is clear is that to be strict with the facts, to be to respect the rules that we have as Muslims, and being creative is not a contradiction. And instead of reacting to what is done by others or criticizing uh, a movie like uh, Noah and others that were made, uh, the most the best reaction is not to react. In mm -hmm. fact, is to act and to propose something else in this field. Mm -hmm. While the whole the discussion that we had today is to set the limits and, and how do we have to deal with the limits because it's very difficult to be creative and at the same time to have ethical limits and, and this is the challenge for Muslims today as you said. Well that's all we have time for. Please let us know your thoughts and views on any of the shows you have seen and here is the way to contact us. We at Islam and Life would like to hear your views about the subjects that we discuss. We would also love to hear your suggestions for our program so get in touch with us. You can also share your thoughts with other Islam and Life fans, engage in debate, and find out how to watch our previous shows. Follow us on Twitter at Islam and Life TV, or join us on Facebook by liking our page Islam and Life on Press TV. Finally, I would like to thank my guest, Sheikh Ahmad Hanif. Thank you so much for your presence and your You're input. Welcome. And I hope to see you next week, inshallah.